Assalamu alaikum, everyone. So, yeah, so the topic is homeostasis, and it has nothing to do with homosexuals. Um, homeostasis is actually a concept in medicine, and on the first year in med school, like first year, first class, that's the first thing that you hear. So, like around 10 years ago, on my first minute, uh, a professor said, Today, I'm going to teach you the basics of medicine, and it's called homeostasis. So, it is the way where your body balances itself. So, for instance, um, I'm not gonna do this one. So for instance, if you eat a lot of sugar, sugar is a bad thing, actually sugar is like a poison, and when you eat it, your body um, triggers some process that eats that sugar and keeps it at a certain point, which is a healthy point for you. Um, when you eat a lot of food, um, you sometimes feel acid in your stomach. That's an example of when your body is not balancing itself. So homeostasis is the process which basically allows you to keep balance in your body. The way it works is, usually there is a receptor, which is the start point here, the receptor tells your body that something is going on wrong. So when you eat a lot of sugar, the receptor is on alarm. If you don't have a lot of sugar, the receptor is on alarm. Then it passes it to some control system, which makes sense of that. So it would understand that something is going wrong and would send it to the effector, which is the organ that would uh, basically work on fixing that. I'm sure you didn't follow any of what I said, so I'm gonna give you an example for it. So, for instance, you eat a lot of sugar, it goes to the pancreas. So the pancreas is your controller, right? There's a lot of receptors there. It figures out that there's so much sugar in your body, so it releases insulin. So the insulin is released, it starts uh, getting all this sugar to your liver uh, in a format. So the liver is the effector, okay? The opposite would happen. You don't have a lot of sugar, so it goes to the liver. It says, hey, can you please give me some sugar? So it releases some sugar into your body. That's one example. Another example is, uh, Okay, that gets too medical now. I'm, I'm gonna remember this one. Okay, I only have 10 minutes. Hmm? This one? Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So. <laughs> So when you, when, when you basically eat, your body needs to basic, uh, break down the food, so it releases some acid. Then when this acid is released, when it's too much, your body realizes that, so it stops doing it. So you don't get like regurg and stuff, unless you have some problem. It's the same exact concept. The concept is that your body is full of receptors. When those receptors figure out that something is going on wrong, it communicates with an organ that takes an action and fixes that. If anything in this process goes wrong, that's a definition of a disease. So almost any disease, you can figure it out this way. Um, as a matter of fact, I didn't study a lot of things in med school, and I would only answer in exams based on that concept. If you realize that concept, you basically know a lot about medicine. Um, in the Quran, there's a lot of examples about homeostasis uh, in like practical life. So for instance, when we uh, spend money, God says in 1729, you shall not keep your hand stingily tied to your neck, nor shall you foolishly open it up, lest you end up blamed and sorry. So it's all about the balance. The reason I wanted to talk about that is because I see a lot of relationship between, med between this concept and between submission. So if we look at health, for instance, health is a good receptor that would allow you to know where your submission is and keep it in balance. So the same way when your body realizes that there is a lot of uh, sugar, it goes communicates through the pancreas. When you realize that your health is not going in the best way, that's a good receptor that something is wrong with your submission. So that should trigger you to take an action and get yourself back balanced. Also, if you see your health going in the right direction, that gives you a good indication that you're actually on the right path. So my point is our health is a receptor. And um, the reason I'm mentioning that is because last week I figured out that many people have a problem because this receptor is broken so they tend to question the whole system. But it is not the case. It's actually a God promised us perfect health as an indicator for where our submission is. Another one is your wealth. Um, if you have a lot of money, probably this is a problem. If you don't have any money, that's also a problem. But God gives you the perfect wealth where you feel like you are, have everything that you need and you can actually control it. It's a good receptor. It's a good indicator where you stand. Others, other, other good receptor is actually reminders. So um, 
in many cases, um, actually, God tells us that, you should, that we should have a community among us that advocates righteousness and forbid evil. And reminders is actually everyone in this room is kind of a receptor for me somehow. So if I can forget about my happiness, about my health, about my wealth, you guys are going to be the receptor that triggers the process that would tell me, hey, you're not moving in the right direction or that what you just did is a good thing and you should keep doing it. So taking reminders is also one thing that I have noted last week. Is people have really hard times with reminders. But if you look at it as everyone in this room, God has created him so that he helps you basically fine tune your submission. You're going to take reminders in a way with more of an open like hard, because basically this persons are, uh, these people are actually helping you. Um, also, one thing that I wanted to talk about is um, one of the controls, one of the receptors is the events that happen in your life, right? So away from the perfect health, wealth, and happiness, and the reminders, some events happen in your life that make you think how your submission is working. So I wanted to share the other half of the story that you guys have been seeing on Facebook, and probably no one knows about that. But when we were talking, um, at one point, Arash came in and was trying to push me away, and I was being said that uh, like some retribution is going to happen, and I got a message from some guy. Um, so basically, we raised money, and after we raised money, we had a clause in the contract that says we have to hire um, a business person. But they had like unique requirements for this guy. It's like, very hard to find. I've been trying. Um, uh, yeah, so last week, I met a false messenger. And after I met him, um, there was some back and forth, and um, we started like uh, some kind of an argument. So during that argument, I got a text message from a guy. Okay, back to the story. So I was trying to hire this person, and I've been trying to hire him. I was, I was given um, a grace period of only 40 days to hire him. It's been around four months already, and I still haven't hired that guy. I've been like looking everywhere for him. Um, anyways, I got a text message from some random guy saying, hey, I'm very interested in that position. That happened literally the same moment we were fighting there, like exactly the same moment. So I went back um, from Tucson and I started interviewing the guy last Monday. The interview was about half an hour. Uh, we ended up talking for four hours. And the guy was the perfect candidate. He knows everything. He's a business guy. He is an engineer. He knows about AI. He's smart. He looks good. Everything, like <laughs> everything. So the guy was just like, tick, check, 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 check. Uh, so anyways, then the test is whenever I send someone, the investors usually send him back and say, nah, we need someone better than that. So I sent him for a probably three or four investors, and today I got the final check that is in, which means I'm going to keep the money. I'm not going to have to turn the money back. And this, is, for me, was a good receptor. Like, this event on its own is a good receptor that God's promise is real. Like, somebody can promise you retribution, and as a matter of fact, you get a blessing right on the same time. What I also wanted to talk about is broken receptors. So in 42:26, God talks about those believers and hypocrites that they cannot listen or hear. So it's the same events that a submitter can go through may happen to a, a hypocrite or a disbeliever, and they just pass by, and he cannot make sense. He cannot just he cannot basically translate that. For me, he's a bad receptor. It's like someone who has diabetes; they have bad receptors. They cannot release the insulin. It's the same story. It's, you just have bad receptors. You can't listen or understand. So honestly, there is no point of debating forever because the receptor is broken. It's the same way like you're expecting a diabetic person to eat a cake and still be healthy. If this is going to happen, then he's going to listen to you. Two is the broken control, which is basically uh, in 7146. They actually, they actually can see God's signs, so they can see and they can hear but they cannot process it. They cannot actually understand it or, or, um, or understand the significance behind it. So we have uh, some guy who works with us. He's a mathematician. We gave him all the miracle of the, the 19. He looked at it, and he said, I'm going to do my best to find all the wrong things in this thing. That was his initial reaction. And my, in my opinion, is like he can see and he can read, and if he's blessed or not, he would make sense of it uh, or not. Um, this is basically something that I wanted to talk with everyone in our community about and in communities in general, is we have to find our homeostasis also. The alternative of, um, the alternative of being harsh is not that we see hypocrites and we hug them. But the alternative of um, being friendly, I'm sorry, so my point is, 
that it's not always black and white. There is a homeostasis in it. So we cannot just go there and fight and just be rude and don't have like kind of tact. And we say that if you advise me against that, you're actually signing with the enemy. I can't see that. That's not homeostasis. It's not the alternative of that is the white. And at the same time, you cannot just go and befriend them. And if I tell you opposite, then I'm telling you not to be like, am I making my point clear? I don't think I am. I am. But my point is that there is a homeostasis. And to reach that, we have to listen to the reminders. We have to question the events that we as a community go through. We have to question our own um, personal life as far as health, as far as wealth, and as far as happiness. If we check mark in all of these things, I think we have our homeostasis. If not, then definitely there's something that we should think about. We should take the reminders and we should try to find that homeostasis, that sweet spot where we are harsh and stern, but we're not also compromising. Because I've listened last week a lot for the fact that who are you to judge? Like, you shouldn't judge people. And if you judge, then you're just not, you're not a human being. Like, who, who are you? Um, you're not God. I think that also the alternative of that, that we shouldn't jump to judging people once we meet them. There is a sweet spot. Like, there is, a, there is that fine point. Um, God willing, in our um, study tonight, um, I'm going to be moderating, and I would like for us to discuss that. How can we find the homeostasis? How can we find the midpoint? Uh, I'm actually done. I'm going to end with, oh, that's. So usually you have to end um, with a quote in this key format. So my quote was, find your homeostasis, but it was Karim Galil. Uh, anyways, so <laughs> find your homeostasis and uh, yeah, enjoy the study tonight. Any questions or comments for Karim? No medical questions. We charge for that. <laughs> um, I, I'm sorry, I came in in the middle of this, but when you're talking about um, judging and in the Quran it says, for God, it says you, you are here to distinguish. He's teaching us to distinguish. So um, I didn't get the first part of your talk, but when I walked in and I saw that you're talking about homeostasis, inshallah, we're all striving to be utmost submitters to reach that state, but... When it comes to distinction, this is a gift from God. Yeah. We, need to, we need to take that seriously. So, inshallah, it adds so, to what you were talking about. I'm not sure exactly. Let me make my point clear. My point <laughs> is that we have to judge that. Otherwise, it's a, it's a satanic concept that we do not judge. So, we have to judge. But there's two extremes. One extreme is you never judge because who are you to judge people? The other extreme is you meet someone, he tells you something that you don't agree with, and you say, okay, this guy's a hypocrite. This guy's a disbeliever. You just snap into judging on, this, on who this person is, regardless of what his background, regardless of how long he has been in submission, what kind of community he's coming from. So my point is we have to find the sweet spot where we can judge, but we can judge based on knowledge and based on wisdom, not just triggering, like not just jumping on the gun. Am I making? Yes. Give her a second. Who was first? <laughs> Someone had their hand up over here? Ma Mozzie or Q was first. Let Mozzie go first. I had a quick comment. I was just going to say, I mean, what you were saying, it, it sounds very similar to what's, I mean, um, in war you're supposed to be sure before you strike, so you want to make sure that yeah, you're not just going to, like, call someone a hypocrite because, it, like, you don't agree with one thing. Because sometimes people just have the wrong understanding. Um, it's not, yeah, they're not, they're not being deliberate or malicious, you know, especially if they're, they've been corrupted by someone else. You know, you got to kind of give people a chance before you put labels on them. So, I mean, I agree with what you're saying that there is that extreme. And I think especially, like, it's easy to fall into, you know, like, like I remember when I, the, the first year I went to the Tucson conference, I'd heard so many bad things. I just looked around everyone and I was like, oh, hypocrite, hypocrite. Yeah, exactly. Because I just heard hypocrite so many times and I'm just there. It's very easy to just stamp everybody. So I, I think it's important to, to like kind of do your due diligence before you. The, the reason I said that is because in actually last week I just made this snap judgment on someone 
and then I was talking to him or her, and I found that we actually agree on everything, and the thing that I disagreed with him or her on, she actually didn't even know about. So when I explained it, she was like very receptive to it, and I was like, uh, I just really sinned, because I just jumped the gun. I didn't find that home you stayed like this balance. Yeah. yeah, it's really easy to do, also. Something you should be aware of. Uh, Mashallah, mine is more of a comment, uh, but you can inshallah comment on it too if you want. Uh, that we, God ordered us to judge based on Quran. 4105 says, uh, you know, I've given you the scripture so that you can judge according to the scripture. Obviously, the scripture cannot be attained overnight. 2114 says that you have to uh, first uh, acquire, or, or uh, God says whoever uh, understands Quran has, has uh, basically been. Uh, blessed or reached uh, a, a great bounty, which is uh, wisdom, according to 1739 Quran is wisdom. So, so therefore, uh, the, the knowledge of Quran is necessary for you to judge correctly. And, and I think that's what you were alluding to, that, that uh, you cannot just judge ba based on your personal first personal impression or your personal opinion. Uh, whatever you do, you have to be able to back it up with the verses that, that uh, for example, God says you can be harsh and stern. You should be harsh and stern with a disbeliever and a hypocrite. And, and I have to or take that commandment seriously. I cannot just befriend anyone. Uh, God says run away from those who oppose God and his messengers. So I cannot be like uh, congregating with people or praying with people who are opposing God's messenger. I think that's what uh, I, my, my understanding is uh, on, on how to judge uh, correctly. The reason I had this topic in mind is because when we were there, someone asked me, I completely agree with you guys, if someone keeps going against the Quran, then he's a hypocrite. But at what point? Like, once he says, oh, I don't, like, I'm against that, then is he a hypocrite or after he continuously does that? And if it does, then what is the time period for it? Just one, one last thing, mashallah, that's great. Uh, the, a good example set by Abraham, which says that, that you will not see anything from us except hatred and animosity until you believe in God. So there is a timeline. So until means that until you change your views, your ways, and then, you know, I, I will change my view towards you. So I think uh, a good example is uh, we have God sent us a messenger uh, to clarify things for us. And I think one of the best ways to look at it is the great debate. Um, I think that's a, that's a prime example how Messenger of God was um, very stern with, with, a, with a known enemy of God who was there to uh, oppose the message under the banner of an interview. And the Messenger was fully aware of that. Um, and, you know, Messenger was very straightforward, direct, and did not compromise, yet was not rude, but, you know, made his point very clearly and showed his stance that he did not agree with that person. So, um, to me personally, um, what Q said, what you said, just one thing to add on top of that, it's always harder for us as human beings to kind of uh, walk away from a discussion than to sit and make that effort to try to uh, convey the message the proper way. Now, you can always go to either extreme. You can tell the people that are in the light and, and, and accept it and, and, and have made up their mind. With those people, obviously, we know how we have to go about it. But like you said, there are people who are in the middle where they still have not made up their mind, even though they can uh, dilly-dally on, on either side. And with those people, it's easy to also shun those people away. Um, but it'll, it'll take more of an effort to sit down and try to reason with them and, and, and you know, show them what's right and what's wrong. And eventually, everyone will make, a, will make their stance. But... However, we have to do our part to present the truth in the right manner with those people. I'm not saying with the people who have made up their mind, but with the people that have not made a firm stance. And I think that's uh, perhaps one of the things that, God willing, we can, we can, we can focus on uh, more maybe tonight or something. Yeah. Um, like I, the only reason I wanted to say something is because I won't be here for your study. but. I'll keep it very short, inshallah. I think the tipping point is when somebody's mind is made up. And um, I, I urge everybody, this actually, you could give a whole sermon on this because God tells us how to debate. 
It requires a lot of homeostasis. There's a lot of sin that can be committed in misjudging and mistreating somebody. And God tells us exactly how to act under every different situation. Um, so judging is uh, a responsibility and a, a big responsibility. Um, but if you follow God's law on how to judge somebody, then you should be just fine. And the tipping point really is, is whether somebody is still um, debating and their mind is open and they're interested or somebody who says, I've made up my mind, I will never believe the way you do, um, there's, there's really nothing to do. I mean, they've judged themselves, in effect, right? And, uh, and I think we have an audio from the messenger that actually says this. He says, you know, if they haven't made up their mind, uh, continue to woo them. And then when somebody says, my mind's made up, I mean, the mind's made up. There's, you're, you're pestering the person. I think that's where both parties can actually start to transgress. Um, actually, I was going to say exactly what Karim Mashouf said. Uh, I see that you judge the person with a label. Um, you can't judge a person with a, with a label if they're open to hearing different things. And even though they may have the different understanding than you, if they're open, you still have to treat that person amicably. They may change, and you have to have that outlook. But however, we know from the Quran that the tragic statement is, my mind is made up. Once a person's mind is made up, and if they, for example, are... Um, ardently opposing, you know, God's message, then that person to me has made that label for themselves. Say that. 